Hello my friends, how's it going? So in the previous section, what we did was we redeployed the Nutanix clusters, we redeployed Prism Central. So in this section, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be deploying my jump hosts. First thing that we need to do is we need to download the Ubuntu images. So I'm going to be using Ubuntu for my jump post and I have already opened up a Google search for the cloud images, right? So these are the links that we can use to download. This is the daily builds for Ubuntu 22.04 and 24.04. So what we can do is we can download the image file, right? We want to ensure that we are using the QCOW2 UEFI slash GPT bootable this image. Let's copy this link. Head over into the images tab in Prism Central and click on add image. Select URL and enter the image URL. So I like to remove the suffix and we can add in a second image which is the 24.04 one. Copy link address and throw that in. Clean up the suffix and click on next and save. And this will allow us to download the images on all of the clusters. So this takes typically about five minutes. And while that is happening, I just wanted to go through a small little website that I made. So this is a blog post that I have, which details out all the prerequisites that is required in order for us to get a single shot installation of Nutanix Kubernetes platform. Now, I know it seems like a lot, but in most enterprise organizations, this is already fulfilled. So things like having DNS records, DLS certificates, networking, firewall rules, those have already been defined, right? However, in lab environments whereby we are trying to spin up Nutanix Kubernetes platform in an isolated environment or agap environment or a lab environment whereby we don't have all of these prerequisites, it's very important to follow these prerequisites so that we do not fail at any stages of the installation process, right? The reason why I actually wrote this blog post up as well as record this video is because I do have a lot of customers, friends, partners, colleagues reaching out to me to ask why their NKP installation is failing. And a lot of times it could be due to things like Docker rate limits, NTP configurations, certificates or DNS settings not configured properly. So this is why I thought it to have a blog post to detail out my thoughts and what I faced in actual real life installation situations and detail all the prerequisites, right? So obviously the first one is we need a jump host, which is what this video is really about. We are going to be installing the jump host from scratch. And I have provided two, two sections, one for Debian-based distributions, which is Ubuntu, and another one is Fedora-based distributions, which is RHEL and Rocky. So here's a script that installs all the tools that I normally use in my jump host, right? So things like kubectl, the command line, yq, jq, helm k9s, all of that is essentially written down in this particular list of commands. And I've also done that for the Rocky and Rail Fedora based distributions as well. All right. So we later when the images have completed downloading, which it has, then we will just be copying and pasting all of that. Obviously you need NTP, right? NTP is very important when we are trying to ensure time is synchronized across all the hypervisors as well as the virtual machines that gets deployed. And if you have got too much of a time variance, your certificates, as well as authentication might start failing. DNS is very important because nobody likes to remember IP addresses. They would rather, it's rather easier to remember an FQDN, right? Or a domain name rather than a, se a series of numbers. We also need FQDNs because we're going to be using certificates, right? Everything in Kubernetes revolves around certificates. So at, we need to ensure that we have the necessary certificates as well. So I also have got a small little step here. If you are trying to deploy your own certificates within your lab environment. Uh, if you are in an enterprise environment, you probably already have got PKI uh, infrastructure in place, so you can generate your certificates from there. The internal registry is something that I always advocate. And this is because all the container images that we use to deploy in Nutanix Kubernetes platform are all hosted on Docker Hub. And Docker Hub has got some rate limits. So if we were to take a look at the Docker Hub rate limits, Docker Hub, rate limits. We see that the rate limits are actually quite quite stringent. A lot of times we have seen that installations fail because of such limits. So having a private registry or internal registry will really help with that. Now I am using this container registry to basically host everything within my lab because I think it's very ineffective to constantly download container images from the internet all the time. So I have all the steps here that automatically downloads or and installs Harbor. So networking is one important 
part of it, whereby we want to ensure that your port and service siders do not overlap with anything that you have on your local subnets. If not, you are going to have routing issues. And we also want to ensure that we plan the network segments as early as possible because we do need to assign static IP addresses or IP address range for the load balancer range as well as an IP address for the Kubernetes API server. So it will be very helpful to actually map those out in a spreadsheet up front. Then if you're going to be doing automatic installs, we need definitely need DHCP and IPAM. And make sure that your DHCP and IPAM do have, does have the DNS configurations already configured. Service accounts are also important because obviously we do not want to be using the Prism Central admin account for both storage as well as provisioning of the virtual machines. So do create a service account in your LDAP so that you can just use that particular service account for anything NKP related. And Nutanix files, Nutanix objects, which I have already deployed. So I use that for my day-to-day -day in my Kubernetes labs. And then, of course, you do not want to be using the local authentication to authenticate into the NKP cluster. So you'll want to have something like your LDAP, Active Directory, OIDC, or a SAML identity provider to get locked into Nutanix Kubernetes platform. And ensure that your NCI and PC versions meet the necessary requirements. And lastly, if you're doing pre-provision infrastructure, have the virtual machines or the bare metal servers already installed with the supported operating systems. And if you are building, if you're going to be deploying on top of Nutanix or any cluster API compatible infrastructure, make sure that you do have a custom based OS already prepared. So there are going to be subsequent videos as to showcase how do we actually create those custom images. And we need to ensure that we've got necessary resource configurations for the control planes and worker nodes on the cluster itself. And we do need to download the NKP Agate Bundle. This is the Agate Bundle that contains all the container images that Nutanix Kubernetes platform uses in order to deploy NKP. So it's just one single bundle for Agate environments or internet connected environments. You just use this bundle to populate registry and you're going to have a seamless installation of Nutanix Kubernetes platform. So that's the whole blog in three minutes. So here we have the images already downloaded, Jemmy and Noble. So 22.04, 24.04. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and create the jump post now. So let's click on create VM, give it a name, select the cluster, I have to give it a CPU, 16 gigs of RAM. The disk I will attach, rather I will clone the 24.04 one and give it one terabyte of storage. Connect it to my management primary network and assign it as a static IP. Select UEFI BIOS mode for boot. And I'll select the customization to be using Cloud Unit. Now this is important, right, for the time zone. We need to ensure that we're using UTC for Linux and local time zone for Windows VMs. So for Linux, we're just going to be using UTC. Click on next and click on create. Then if I right click and power on, and let's just wait for it to boot. Great, VM has been successfully booted. We will last launch a terminal and our SSH to the node. So successfully logged in. I will just alleviate my permissions and change my host name. Then what we can do is we can go back to the prerequisites block and copy the whole bunch. Make sure you have selected the correct S distribution. So I'm using Ubuntu. Let's select the copy button over here and we can then paste it in. And this will kick off the installation of the, all the tools that we use, typically use inside the jump post. Great, so all the tools has been successfully installed. I like to give it a reboot for good measure. And once the VM has come back online, then we can check out all the, the completion, whether it's working. All right, so we see the host name has successfully changed. If we were to Helm tap tap, we can see the completion working. Okay, tap tap. This works as well. So that looks good. So this concludes this section. In the next section, we will be creating our SSL certificates as well as deploying Harbor. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.